All right, guys, Shoddy T here with another Alliance War video. Um, yeah, this one is the 10th war of the season, so we got two more left. Um, and, of course, I'm going to make sure I knock these videos out. I got a, another rank five opening and some other opening videos I have to show you guys. And... Um, will be completely caught up haven't started act seven yet plan on starting that this weekend so anyway this war we got stubborn once again I'm going with venom torch and sorcerer supreme and didn't get the first couple of fights recorded basically i used torch against uh dark hawk the same way i used torch against him in the abyss and then I also had a, um, Mr. Not Mr. Fantastic, but Professor X. And I accidentally used my pre-fight in that fight. And that's actually going to come back and bite me later on. You will see. But anyway, first fight here that's recorded. It's going to be Venom versus Modoc. Going to keep it simple. Venom is a stubborn attacker, so it helps that I can um, that I can mitigate the stubborn. I get clipped there by the SB2. Luckily, it doesn't trigger the bleed there. And as I usually do, I leave up the long distance relationship node, especially if it's an opponent that's a little tricky, where I can have that willpower health as backup. But that was a pretty standard fight there. Now this next fight is gonna be anything but standard. This is probably the most stressful fight that you're about to see here. So first of all, like I said, when you bring in three champs, it's tough to bring the right counters for every matchup. And usually I'm the one taking this particular node here um, on node 23. Most of the time it's either Cork or it's Nick Fury. Normally I would bring Havoc for this type of fight, but based on my path, I couldn't afford to bring Havoc. So I had to work with what I got. And Sorceress was the best matchup. So my thought process with this was to get to her phase where you put a slow on the opponent. Where you can bypass evade and do like a full five hit combo. But I have to manage a lot of things in this particular fight. Of course, with her being a non-mutant, every attack is going to... Add a tactical charge. So once he gets to 15, he becomes unblockable. And if he throws a special, he gains four automatically. So it's really, it's a lot of stuff to manage in this fight. And of course, you got the aggression prowess. So I'm just trying to throw in as many of those slows as I can. And there's the first unblockable that triggers there. So I get punished for that. Now he's he's unblockable, so now I got to wait for that tactical charge to go back to 14. So I managed to wait that out, and we played around with it again. So this is, we're having a lot of fun here, man. So now he could have thrown it, he could have thrown an SP1 with all those prowls and probably would have killed me right there. But I was just waiting out that tactical charge again to get below 15. And like I said, we're just... We're playing keep away. We're just waiting for that tactical charge to go back to 14. We just buy some time by throwing the SP1 there. I mean, it's just, I'm just, I'm, this is the ultimate creativity fight. <laughs> so now we got the prowess somewhat under control. All right, so now we can parry him now. Well, I don't think he'll be stunned, but either way, I don't mind that. Plus, I had the heart, the, the healing. Um, rune with sorcerer so i was able to heal a bunch of that block damage so that was another 
strategy that I had in mind. But once again, he's unblockable. So I'm trying to buy some time or see if I can get an intercept. <laughs> and like I said, we're just playing keep away this whole fight. Um, this is just, uh, we're going to intercept there with another special. <laughs> And now we got rid of the unblockable, so now we can go back to fighting. Uh, and then, but again, he throws the special, but once again, I got that healing with the block. So it's a, it's a lot of stuff I was doing, a, little, a lot of little stuff. And now we're just going to get ourselves out of the corner here. I want to try to get that Fury rune up. And I'm guessing it's there. I was, I'm, I'm hoping that it's there because that, uh, that notification came up. I'm hoping that it came up. Unfortunately, I didn't. I propped up the regeneration one, which is not a bad thing. Because, like I said, all that block damage that I'm taking is good. that I can regenerate a lot of that back. But once again, we're retreating. Now, we're just going to buy some more time to those tactical charges. Sorry about that. My battery was at 20%. But yeah, we're going to let this battery, not this battery, we're going to let the tactical charges go down again just by buying some time. And I'll go ahead and put it on the charger while I'm recording here. Don't have any more mishaps. But yeah, so we're, we're, we're having a lot of fun here. He has 11 prowess charges. So basically, he throws another SP1 on toast. But then again, I got that, that uh, block protection there. So we're just doing a lot of intercepting. Uh, I mean, we're just praying that this kills him here and hope he has 1% health. I'm just going to throw an SP1, hope the chip damage kills him. And it does. Whew. Yeah, that was a very fun fight. I don't know how I survived that. I mean, I just played keep away the whole fight. And uh, I played, played with fire there, but we got away with it. All right, so this next fight, do I take this one? Apparently I do. So I, I believe I'm, I'm guessing this is with Venom. This is usually who I would use against Domino if I'm fighting Domino. Yeah, okay. I wasn't 100% sure. Like I said, it's been a while since I recorded this war, so I'm, so I'm basically... Um, just doing a little ad lib and as the video is recording because I remember some highlights of some fights during the war and I try to preview a little bit of it before I actually commentate so that way it's a little bit smooth now the thing about Domino of course when you bleed her she has a 50% chance to shrug it off and what that does it gains her a little bit of power also whenever you hit into her block when she's lucky she has a chance to gain extra power as well because it has a chance, to, one of those blocks, could, when it has a chance to be a perfect block. But overall, I mean, her on this note is not that difficult. Uh, because you really, I mean, she's not stirring for one. And like I said, you can, her specials are easy to evade. You, you, it's easy to intercept. There's a lot of different ways to play Domino. So that placement really wasn't the most ideal. All right, so this next fight, you thought that Nick Fury fight was dramatic? Well, you're going to see the ultimate dramatic fight here with Sorcerer. I, this is the fight, one of the fights that stuck out to me. And again, we're, 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 really, we're really flirting with it. Um, we're getting away with it. But can we get away with this all war? That's the question. So in a previous war, I actually lost with Sorcerer Supreme against Nova on this node because I applied too many debuffs on him and he was just crushing me with the the block the chip damage. So first thing I did is make sure that I uh propped up the regeneration block so that way if he hits into my block I can heal a lot of that back if I happen to apply a lot of debuffs on him. And the good thing about Sorcerer Supreme she does have uh, great energy resistance, so it's SP2 that normally gives a lot of deals a lot of energy damage. Uh, it's not going to do as much damage to her, so so that was a plus. 
So we do this SB2 mainly just to get ourselves out of the corner, but we also made sure we did it when we had the regeneration phase. Now, of course, you have that choice whether you want to go with extra power or go with regeneration and just pace yourself throughout the fight. But as you can see, we're a minute and a half in. And he's 25% health, so we do need to probably get a couple of intercepts in there to get a little bit of burst damage in there. So I'm trying to find myself an opening. And this one, it's just one element of Havoc. Well, not Havoc, but Nova just don't quite get. When you stun him every once in a while, when you try to attack him, he auto box you. That's the part I still have to figure out. I'm pretty sure it's listed in the abilities, but I have to just know when that happens. I don't know if it happens when he has high Nova charges and that happens or what. I don't know. Maybe it's that blue buff he has. I don't know. But as you see, I parried him there, and he didn't auto block when he had that blue thing. So I don't know when he auto blocks. It's just one of those mechanisms that just got to get used to. He'd rather just not you rather just avoid that situation altogether. Of course, this will be a more tailor-made matchup for Doom. But, um, but once again, we use Sorcerer here. It would have been trickier, because I did debate about seriously bringing Doom this war. But it would have been much trickier to fight Doom, uh, fight Fury on that uh, note that I just fought with Sorcerer Supreme. At least she had that slow mechanic where I can do five-hit combos. Doom does not. And and plus, it would have been very hard for me to get rid of the um, the tactical charges with the unblockable, and and also not be cornered. So it, I just, I it, it, again, bringing three champs, you're not going to be able to bring the most ideal for every match, especially if you're going to be fighting a lot of fights. But I like to show, I like to be challenged. So it's. I don't mind taking the fight, so because it provides great theater for one. Um, so, but again, we're time is becoming an issue here. Um, we're, I mean, he's gaining heal power from these debuffs that I'm applying, so that's not helping. But once again, we just have to get an intercept. If we can get a nice intercept, we'll be able to get this fight under control. So I'm trying to find an opening for an intercept here. But I have to get him to throw a special where it puts him well underneath a bar of power so I can safely intercept. I mean, it's not looking good right now. I mean, this is just, all right, here's our opening, and, there, and he auto blocks, so the intercept doesn't count. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's so annoying, man. This guy is so annoying. So. So we got a second chance here, but he has that, uh, and he got the auto block. This time I didn't get parried. So again, it's just so weird. So we're trying to get an intercept here. We really are right at this point. And we we intercept, but then we get parried. So I mean, this is just frustrating, but I got the intercept there. I don't know how I got it, but I got that intercept. And we go straight into SB3, and I believe this SB3 kills him. And good night, Irene. Man, I mean, these, these are some very dramatic fights. So the next fight here, Human Torch. I really wanted to use Human Torch for this fight with a pre-fight, but again, I had already used it. So I just had to go with Venom because I definitely don't want to go with Sorcerer Supreme because he kills, um, Torch kills Mystic. So... But the thing about this node, if you bleed the opponent, he has increased power gain, which against Torch is not a bad thing because you'd rather face his SP2 than his SP1. It's easier to evade. But then I get hit there, so that takes a good chunk of health off. And I get hit there, I just totally miss time to dash back and just get KO'd. So that was not good, but I have to do this fight with Venom, so I, have to, uh, so I revive him. 
potion up. I mean, I got a good amount of units, but I was really trying to save these units for other stuff. But I ended up uh, doing a revive here and a big boy team health. But then I realized, let's just do an individual uh, health potion there. It just It's the same amount of units, but um, I guess in the grand scheme of things. But the other guys didn't really need healing. And I'm pretty sure I can finish this fight with Venom. I'm just going to be more careful not to um, be cocky. I was a little cocky a little bit. So I've been known to be cocky at times. So, because it's a safer way to avoid that SV2 instead of just being crazy. And you can actually avoid this SV1. But if you block that last hit, he hits a smolder. So you have a chance to be incinerated on every hit. So that's a lot of fun. So this second attempt is still draining some health and I'm getting incinerated now. So now we're gonna have to avoid another SP2, but I have to be careful this time not to get clipped. So I decided to just block it this time and then it's gonna play it at the end. But now he has two smolders, so even more likely to get incinerated. But fortunately the fight is over. So yeah, that was fun. Now, this next fight, and again, I mean, I, I, the thought process, I thought this would be a fight that's a good matchup for uh, Sorcerer Supreme, but it's one small detail I really forgot about this upcoming fight is that she, I mean, uh, Doom is armor break immune, so... That gonna that's gonna nerf a lot of the potential damage I was gonna deal to him, and I'm just gonna go ahead and ruin ruin the surprise. Um, I ended up timing out timing out in this fight. Couldn't get enough intercepts in there, and just the damage was just too low. He was healing willpower off, because I was gonna use the slow debuff to prevent the aura from triggering. So so I was good at doing that, but it just it was too much. Too much willpower, not enough overall damage because a lot of her big damage is off of that SP3 and the following specials just stacking up those armor braids. But again, you can't armor break Dr. Doom. So, so really, if she doesn't have that, she pretty much hits like a pillow. So you got to be the intercept. So I got some intercepts there. So, but even with that, we're taking 20% health a minute. It's gone. So we're on pace to flirt with the clock once again, and that's with intercepting. So I definitely can't afford to be hitting him with protection a lot. And we also have to get rid of stubborn. So um, so we throw the SP3 here. But again, we end up timing out this fight. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just let you guys see the destruction in action. while I go grab something to drink.
There's the timeout. So I had a chance to grab a glass of water and just watch the demise. So this time we just go ahead and um, I want to say, do we boost up here just to make sure we finish the fight? Because it's kind of dangerous to use torch here because again, you apply debuffs to the opponent, the power gains increased and I mean, it probably could have worked, but I guess I was just thinking about that too much. It would have been an easier fight if I had Nova Flame, but once again, Nova Flames was used early on. Just so stupid, because it really wasn't necessary to use that against Professor X. But I figured I got over 50% the first time, so second time I should have made a finish, finish them off as long as, as long as I don't die, basically. So I didn't die, so... Uh, so I accomplished that much. It just, it just the fight was a marathon. Even with five minutes still time, I was just bad. And then we throw an SP3 without getting rid of stubborn. So not sure what that's all about. But hey, and we do it with the wrong. Well, we do it with the slow one active. I guess I guess that's probably why I did it, just to not deal with the aura very often. And by the way, if you guys want to fast forward to the end of the fight, you can. Because there's really nothing to commentate here if you just want to watch. At the very least, you can get something about how to evade his specials constantly. And, yeah, that's about all you can really gather out of watching the rest of this. All right, painfully we're done. That was marathon. Now we, I'm monitoring it here. It's a close, very close war at this point. We are playing from behind. So we wanna try to make sure that we do our part not to time out or die anymore. Um, now this fight, I definitely don't have to worry about timing out, but I go ahead. I think I go ahead and use a boost anyway because it is the it was the item use event back then, and plus I got overflow of those ten percents and the the champion boost. So it's like why not? Might as well use it. I mean, overflow with the thirty percent is ridiculous. Now with the with that throne baker reward and the Act Six um, compensation package, which was nice. But once again, uh, Venom, he is immune to power drain from a tech champ. So her SP1 does nothing to him. And of course, you've seen war videos where I fought with Venom against her. And the idea here is to see if whenever she pops up her armor up, I can consume it and gain some health. And we're going to see if we can do that again. And we do. So everything is going to plan. Now we just got to bake this SP2. She's not cooperating. And we're starting to get cornered, but she finally throws it there. 
and we have to be careful not to trigger miss. So we knock her down and we'll get ourselves out of the corner. And now we're trying to set ourselves up to consume her regeneration. And we do successfully there. And as you see in a lot of these fights, it's all about knowing where you are, being aware in this. I mean, if it wasn't for that, I probably would have died multiple times in this war, especially in that Nick Fury fight and probably even a Havoc fight. Um, but, but yeah, so just little things like that, just to be, uh, being aware when it's basically know your champs, know your champs, know your attackers, know your defenders. You got the dual, uh, system there where you pretty much dual any champ just by typing in their name. Some of the newer champs in the game, they have not put there yet, which is disappointing because there are some champs I really would like to duel and, they're not there so but but in general do the good thing is, is that most of these newer champs you can fight them in the event quest you just have to find a path that has them if you want to fight against their mechanics like against their abilities and their uh, utilities Cause that's the main thing because the nodes are the nodes so you, you know that all the nodes in this war are the same nodes you see in Act 6 Exploration. So obviously in this tier, uh, preferably if you're running this tier, you definitely want to uh, have Act 6, com Act 6 completed. I mean, it makes war much easier because you're familiar with the nodes. I mean, if you're not, if you haven't done Act 6, then it just makes fights like this much more difficult because this particular node, there's one specific path in 6.3.4, the Dark Hawk chapter, or is it 6.4.3, whichever one is the Dark Hawk chapter, there's a path that starts with guillotine 99 and it's polka dot power. I'm mean, not polka dot power, but it's a uh, stun reflect. Um, so, so it's the same concept. And then there's a polka dot power path in six point in the Grandmaster chapter, the very last one, the one that starts with Doctor Strange. Uh, so there's polka dot power there. So if you want to know how both of those work separately, and then just apply that common sense to apply them together, that node is a piece of cake. Now, for some reason, this recording, the fight it itself was recorded upside down. Not sure why the phone did it. So basically I rotated the video there. So that way you can see this fight the right side up. But it made the beginning of the fight upside down. But this fight goes anywhere but sideways. <laughs> so uh, you've seen me fight this fight plenty of times now. So it's, it's almost like a mainstay. Now again... There are other options against Thing, and Venom's not the best. I'm just comfortable with him. He's a rank three, so I like his damage output. Um, because that if he's a rank three attacker, it's, I'm less likely to tr trigger stubborn. I'm just relying on straight raw damage, and plus he's a stubborn attacker, so I don't have to worry about having to get rid of stubborn very often. So I just I just like this. I like this matchup. It works for me. Like I said, A Gun, Void, um, those are my, probably, probably A Gun is my best option. But again, just not a lot of wars that allow me to properly ramp up A Gun in the path that I'm taking. Could I have done it this war? I mean, Dark Hawk would have been kind of annoying to ramp up against. I could have done some work against Professor X um, who was I fought Modoc would just be a constant um, just out of rhythm type of fight definitely would not have been able to do it against Domino or Nick Fury uh, and Nova you definitely you prefer to fight him with a stubborn attacker and then Human Torch uh, yeah I could have done it could have ramped him up there but it wouldn't have been enough to have a, 
an effective combo to fight against thing at the end. So, so there we go. Now this fight is is kind of not pacing how I want it. So, I mean, but it's no surprise. I mean, this war was all about playing the clock, like playing Russian roulette with the clock and your health. Um, but all we need is just a solid SP2. That's gonna take a good chunk of damage there. There we go. But we're still, we're halfway through the fight time-wise, but half of his health is not gone. So there's still work to do. I do have assassins. So, and I believe this is the SIG 200 thing. I think last where I said it was, but it was actually a SIG 80. Um, but this one here, this is the one that was SIG 200, because as you can see, every time he propped protection, I was dealing next to no damage to him. So, because he already has the rock stacks. So we're doing a solo job managing the rock stacks. Now we got the, we got a little lucky there that we, get, we triggered a bleed, so that reset his number back three. And now, we're starting to make a little bit more progress, but now he triggered protection once again, so the damage is nerfed. But now it's gone. I do a five hit combo, hopefully none of these bleed, and it doesn't, so we can just bait the SP1. We're doing shallow evades there to not trigger stubborn. Again, that's a dork lesson video. I mean, he has a lot of great videos. And by the way, if you're not watching these summer showdowns, there is a lot of excellent fighting, especially the Oceana series. Uh, there was some excellent fighting there. I mean, the American one was okay. I mean, the person that fought the best there was uh, Happy McMuffin. But all the guys in that Oceana Asia uh serving the showdown semifinal was excellent and even the europe uh the europe one was pretty good too so i definitely encourage you guys to watch that because it shows champs against the probably not the ideal matchup and in some cases they get they one shot these guys but it's just a lot of tactics that's used there like baiting specials baiting heavies hitting to the block uh playing cornered and like dashing back in the corner and counter light. I mean, just a lot of tactics there. But anyway, uh, we ended up losing this war, unfortunately. So now we're five and five on the season. But um, anyway, hope you guys enjoy, like, subscribe, share, and I'll be posting another video tomorrow. Peace.